Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and we're going to start a new project today. Now, my daughter-in-law, Samantha, sent me a picture of a sweatshirt with a quilt block on it, and it was super cute. And then my daughter-in-laws were like, maybe you can make us all one. So, of course I can, and this is going to be super fun because I'm going to get to make one block and really make it for each girl. You know what I'm saying? Like really customize it. So today we're working on Jenna's. Now Jenna is tiny and I bought her a medium sweatshirt because I wanted her to have a little room. You know, everybody likes a, a bigger sweatshirt. So we need to discover what size block we want to put on here. Now you probably noticed I had that pin in there because I was marking the middle, but now I don't think my middle was right. So I'm going to take you through and show you kind of what my plan was. So this is the center of my ruler. And what I'm looking at are these um, seams right here. As you know, with sweatshirts, they're typically kind of wonky. They're not exactly perfect. So rather than just ironing this in half, I want to use these sleeves as my marker, okay? So what I'm doing here is trying to get the same number of inches to this seam and this seam on either side. So I've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's what I'm looking for because that lets me feel like I'm in the center. And I think that I am. Or at least the center of this sweatshirt because this sweatshirt is not square, I can tell you that. All right, so I'm gonna mark this six inch spot right here as my center. This doesn't have to be perfect. What I really like about this project is that it's kind of gonna feel folky, you know, kind of kind of primitive, so a little bit off won't matter. All right, so there's that. Now, let's look at one other thing while we're here. So you can see the neckline there. I've gotta decide what size the block needs to be, and they're gonna be different for every girl because every sweatshirt is a different size. Well, I say that, two of them are the same size. But what I'm gonna do is just kind of lay this here. And I'm thinking I want somewhere in here to be the point of my block. I kind of feel like a 10 by 10 block because I'm gonna be doing star legs on this. So it won't be, I don't think it's gonna be just an actual block. I think I'm gonna do it a little different. I'll show you as we go. But I think a 10 by 10 block is gonna be really good for this. I wanted to take a second and show you this. I got this at So Charming, this little book is one of those books with the little dots. Do you see how it's got like the dotty grid? I love this. And every time I do a project, I start in here. I draw it out. Um, that was my pumpkin quilt that I was working on. This is another quilt that actually was a pattern, but I felt like I needed to draw it out for myself. And I've kind of gotten comfortable. This was a wall hanging that I did. And what I really like is I can go back to this and number one, see what projects I've done. And number two, see how I did them. This is an ongoing project. That's why there's nothing drawn here. These are measurements I'm working on. That is also part of it. It's a big one. And then this is a purse I made. So y'all don't really want to see all this, but this is Vince's quilt. So what I need to do is get to one more page. So I can start Jenna's. Now I normally don't like to waste paper and I would come right here, but I can see that I started a project on the back of this page rather than flipping it. So I'm gonna leave that just in case I need it for that project. All right, let's draw out this pattern. All right, so I'm gonna write Jenna's quilt block. Now this is not her quilt. She has one coming. So this is just the block for her shirt. And I'll put over your shirt. Okay, now I'm gonna build this from the middle out. Okay, here's why. The other day I was watching Missouri Star a, a, a while ago and she made a square block and then they added star legs to it. And it opened my mind to go, wait a minute, I love star legs. I can put a star leg on everything as long as I have a square in the middle, right? So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna start with a square. I think I'm gonna give myself six by six for the middle, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, let's see. Let me make a mark to get myself started. Let's go about here. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll go over one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Y'all don't need to hear me count. All right, then I'm gonna make my mark. Now, sometimes I'll use a ruler. Today I'm not, I'm just sketching. But if it's something that you're gonna try to do, you know, you want a pattern forever, go ahead and use a ruler, just lay it on the page. It's super easy to do that. Okay, Jenna is a cat lover. And I have seen these cat quilts and I think I can figure them out. And that's what we're going to try to do. Okay. So I'm going to start from this corner building it. All right. The reason is I know what size I need to make my cat ears. Okay. If I build from this corner and I have any leftover, I can always clean it up from here. Just watch what I mean. So I'm going to start with a rectangle because I know I want the ear rectangle to be right here. And then inside of here, we're going to have these little snowballed corners. That's what's going to make our ears. Okay, so based on my math, that's a two inch by one inch. But remember, we're going to add seam allowances and that's going to blow us out a little bit, but we'll do that in a minute. All right, then for her head, I think a two 
by two inch square is a perfect little cat head, right? And then her body can be this whole section. And then I'll snowball this corner. Well, that was not hard. That was pretty easy, right? And I think we can do it in the six by six space. Now the question is, do I want to add seam allowance? Or do I want to cut it just like this and get what I get? If I do that, it just shrinks everything in, okay? I think I'm going to add the seam allowance. So let's do that. So let's get started with what we need. So, and, and normally I would go ahead and draw out my star legs. But the reason I think I'm not going to is I think I'm going to do my star legs after I make this block so I can see what it actually ends up like. I don't want this to be too hard. I want this to be fun. So I don't want to like give myself hard, hard parameters. So let's go up here. Let's go to the ears. And so for the background of the ear, I'm going to need, I'm going to add that half an inch. Remember, half an inch is a quarter of an inch seam allowance because we're going to split it on either side. So if it's two inches, I need two and a half, two and a half by, and this is one inch, so I need one and a half. I'll just do 1.5 because I got kind of close over there. All right, so that's the background. Now for my points of the ear, I'm going to need two squares. Now here's the thing. This looks like a flying geese unit but I don't really want it to be a flying geese unit. And the reason I don't is because I don't want a perfect flying geese. I want these to not be exactly touching in the middle because I want to feel like cat ears, right? So I'm going to snowball instead of make a flying geese unit. I don't know if any of that makes sense. I'm just learning this stuff, you guys. All right, so what that means is I don't want my square to be all the way to the top and I don't want my square to be all the way to the middle. So since this is an inch, I think I'm going to do three quarter three quarter of an inch squares and I'll need two of those. Okay. And that way I can snowball and get the look I'm going for. Good deal. Next, this is a two by two square. So I need it to be two and a half by two and a half. So that's another square and that'll be the head. I won't make too many notes on that. The body is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three. And then this little snowball, it can be an inch by inch because I don't mind it filling up that whole um, spot. So one by one inch square. So we'll call this the tail and this is the body. And I better make a note, this is the head. Now, knowing me, <laughs> I'll go back and sketch this out later, neater, and I probably will. Like for example, this was a sketchy design, okay? This was one that I drew and then went back and cleaned up. You can see the difference, right? So I'll probably go back and clean this up because as soon, hopefully when she show, when she wears this shirt, somebody else wants it and I already have the measurements done, right? All right, let's cut these out. So this is a layer cake I have. And what I like about using layer cakes, you know I'm a paper crafter by heart at heart, right? This feels like a paper pack to me and I can kind of work with that in my brain. So this is way, way, way more fabric than we need. We just need a couple of pieces out of here. So here's what I want to do. I want to decide what I want the kitty cat to look like. Now, these fabrics are so pale, it's not going to matter which one I pick really, but the kitty cat to me is going to be the main focus. So I just want to go through and see which one I think would be the prettiest fabric. This is so pretty. Oh my goodness, hard choices. I'm thinking this might make a really pretty little kitty cat. It's got the purple in it to pull out the sweatshirt. So I'm going to go with that for the cat. Then we just need a background fabric here. Now I'm gonna save this out because I'm gonna need to make star legs, but let me pick a background fabric. I caught myself saying, I'm going back to the paper pack. Nope, going back to the layer cake. I think this will be pretty for our background. So let's get to cutting. Don't worry about all this lint. We're gonna clean that up at the end. That's gonna be everywhere. So we're not gonna stress about that. These fabrics are so delicate. They're so pretty. In my last video, it was mentioned that I should try using one of these design boards. Well, I actually had one, but I didn't think about it. So now I'm gonna try it. All right, so we're gonna lay these pieces out. I think that one goes this away. Now you might've noticed I cut this piece wrong in the beginning and I gotta show you what I did. I said that I was adding seam allowances, but I didn't write it. So when I went to do it, I did it wrong. So I'm gonna go make that mark right there. That half inch matters. So when you get the numbers in the description, they'll be right. Okay, so that is body, background. This is head. This is ear unit. These are ears, ears, and tail. 
And I do think this one probably goes this way, but if I did my math right, it should fit. So I'm just gonna get started and see what we get, okay? I think it might be too long, actually. I think that's where my issue's gonna be, but we'll see. All right, let's start sewing. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is do my little ears, and we're going to need to draw on them. So let's move this over. I'm gonna turn these upside down, and I'm kind of paying attention to where the flowers are so I can see which ones will be left behind. I think I want these, I want more purple on here. So this is going to fold back. So that's where my flowers are there. And this one doesn't have as many florals, but I like those there. So we'll put it here. Now, what we need to do is draw a diagonal line or just use your seam tape if you have some seam tape on your um, sewing machine. All right. So I'm really bad about this. So make sure you have these lines like they go. Just remember, you'll sew this line down and this fabric will fold over and be what shows. Now, I saw in a video, and I don't know whose it was, but they said it's best to not sew on the pencil line, but to sew just inside of it to where, you know, into the seam allowance, just to, just right beside the pencil line. So you get a neater fold over, and I find that really works for me. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew this line and this line, and we'll get back together. Because I use a quarter of an inch foot whenever I'm putting my pieces together, I'm going to go ahead and sew this snowball on too. I'll draw that angled line and sew it on this corner because I have to change my foot out for the rest. So I'm going to do that one real quick too. All right, I got those done. I'm going to trim these little threads off because they just kind of drive me insane. And we're going to get to use my new little iron. I've literally not used it before. Let's see if it's hot yet. It's getting there. There's something you need to know about this. If you get this new um, Aliso travel iron, that's an on-off button. I didn't realize. Like if you hit this button, it goes off or standby maybe, and there's on. And it has a light, you guys, <laughs> all that nighttime sewing. I picked this up at So Charming. I'll make sure I leave their link in the description. Everything I have in here just about is from So Charming. Okay, so did you see what I just did? I wanted to set that seam first. Now I'm going to roll this back and see this. Do you see how sewing just to the inside of that line literally makes that line up so perfect? I don't know if that's good. I just know I saw somebody do it, and it worked for me when I did it. I just think it looks really clean and neat. So there's that side ironed down. Let's do this one. It's obviously still getting hot because I can touch it pretty good, but once it is hot, let me turn this the other way. Once it is super hot, this gets harder to touch after you iron it. So just pushing that back. Okay, so that is going to be my cat ears. See how I didn't want them to touch in the middle? And it's not, and I didn't want them to touch at the very top. All right, now we can cut away what's underneath. So I'm gonna come right underneath here. Y'all, these scissors, watch this, like butter. These are those tonic scissors I tell you guys about. We sell these in my store at mamamadeit.com. I'll link it as well. I'm in love with how these cut fabric, and they're heavy and weighty, and they're not terribly expensive, which I also like. All right, I'm gonna do that one more time, and I might even put a clapper on it. Do you guys know what a clapper is? So this is a clapper, and what you do with it is you iron, you get the heat on there, and then you sit that clapper on to let that heat kind of sit. Um, so I may do that also. I have this sitting on my cutting mat, which is a no-no because it will heat through this wool and go down to my mat and bucklet. So don't do that. I had to move it off. All right, let's get this one done. This is our little body. Now, I think what I want to do is build this first. So I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to sew him onto here. Now. If you feel like this needs to be squared up, like if you need to cut this and trim all those edges up, go ahead and do that. This is not too bad for me. I can trim that up at the end, so I'm just going to go do my quarter of an inch seam right there. All right, I'm going to set that seam. And then I'm going to fold it back and get our little ears to appear. That's so cute. Now you can see where I do need to square this up. Let me move this so you can see that. I do need to square this up here, but everything else looks pretty good. But I need to get those edges cleaned up. Let me do that real quick. So now, look, this is lining up. Now I want to sew this to this piece just by flipping this over like this and sewing that down. So I'll do a quarter inch seam right here. Something else I'm noticing. So normally I would iron to the dark side, but this really doesn't have a dark side and I don't really like the way that seam is acting. So I think I'm gonna go and iron it the other way. I think this is the kind of stuff you just learn with experience. You know, I do like ironing my seams to the dark side, but since this is not really going to, it's not going to be a bad seam to show. It's not a lot of dark behind here. I think this will lay better this way. Let's flip it over and look at it. Yeah, see, it's laying much flatter that way. All right, so I feel better about that. So now we'll take this guy to this guy 
and sew that quarter inch seam right down that side. Now we'll just set that seam. And I do want to do this one to the green there. So let's push this back like so. That little delicate kitty head is so cute. I hope this turns out super delicate. All right, we've got a couple things to do here. We need to finish this off by cutting this away that we left there. You just cut to a quarter of an inch, you know, just as if you had sewn a quarter of an inch seam. And to be honest, sometimes I go a little tighter because I don't want bulk. Now what we're going to do with our kitty is we're going to take this top section. Oh, yeah, it's working out. And we're going to lay this on top like this. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam here, putting them together. Then I'll square up. I'm going to have to square this guy up anyway, but I'm just going to sew this for now. All right, we're going to set this seam. Then I'm going to roll this over and see what we get. I have it upside down, but that's because I'm wanting to sew, I'm wanting to iron that seam in that direction. That's cute, a cute little kitty laying there. Now I'm gonna have to square this up. So I wanna do that now so I can add on my star legs. I'm very, very happy with this. It did turn out six and a half, and that's good because I need that seam allowance if I wanna keep it six. So and I really don't have much to do. Just have this tiny little bit I wanna get here off this edge. And that may be all I have to do. Let's look at it. That's pretty much six and a half all the way around. Pretty happy with that. Now let's talk star legs. So just so you wouldn't have to watch all this, I went ahead and made these cuts. So these are three and a half by six and a half and I have four. These are three and a half by three and a half and I have four. And then I decided I want my star legs to all be eight different patterns. So rather than rip through my layer cake like that, I went to a charm pack that I had that matched and I'm using the ones from the charm packs. I didn't have as big of scraps if I did that. Okay, so I've already on the back of all of my trying or my squares that we're gonna do a flying geese unit out of, I've already drawn the line, okay? And you just draw it from corner to corner. Now I want to lay these out and I'm not laying them out and gonna sew them at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. These are gonna overlap each other. So I'm not gonna lay them out and sew them at the same time. But what I do wanna do is make sure I like the patterns I'm putting together, if that makes sense. So I'm good with that one. So let's get another one. When I go to the sewing machine, I'll do one at a time on there because they overlap. So, if, and here's another thing, let me show you. I don't know if this is gonna matter, but I put that um, fabric, which is like this pattern. I have this four different times in what I'm putting down. I put it on this side. So I either need to keep that going all the way around, which means I would do the same thing over and over and over again, or I should switch them up so that on the next star leg, it would be, it'll go pattern, flower, flower pattern. I think I'm going to keep them the same. I think I'm going to do that. I think it'll look better. All right. So last one, they're all laid out. Now I'm going to go sew. And again, this really does help me. I'm going to sew just to the inside of that line. It's not enough for you to really tell it. I'm just doing my stitches on this side of the pencil, not on top of the pencil. And I think it really works. So I'm working on my last one. And I want to show you what I mean when I say to sew just inside of that line. So this is my selvage side, right? That part will be cut away because this is going to flip over. So what I'm doing, let me do it this way. When I put this guy in here, there's a little mark on my foot. I'm going to bring you in so you can see it. This little edge of my foot, the little flat part right there, I line it up on my pencil line. So my stitch line goes just beside. And I'll show you how that does when we iron it. So I sink my needle first. I, I find my machine works better that way. If I put my needle in first, it doesn't seem to gather as much behind. And then I'm a very sew, slow, uh, sewist. I set my throttle low so I can push my foot all the way down because I do better. I'm more precision when I go a little slow on these things. All right, so let's look at that. So see it right beside that pencil line? That's where I do it. Now we need to go ahead and iron this open so we can sew our other one on without having a mess down here. But I wanna show you this. Look how neat that is when you do that little trick with the sewing. I don't know who said that. I wish I could give them credit. I do not remember who taught me, but it's a perfect tip to just go right beside the line and you get such a beautiful fold back. So let's just do a quick dry run. I haven't trimmed these or anything, but I just kinda of wanna see how this is gonna look. So we're gonna have these pieces like this for our little star legs, and we're gonna have our little kitty in the middle. Now this fabric and this fabric are the same, so I'm gonna put this one down here. 
so that our kitty will really pop. And we'll put this one up here so it can have its moment. I might even change this because I'm not a fan of that. Let me see if it gets better if I do this. Nope. Let's see if it gets better if I put this one over there. See, I don't want to lose the edges of my cat. So it looks like we're going to have to put this one here. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world because I can still see the kitty in there. Now these guys need to go here in the corners. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this together in rows now. Okay. Using a quarter of an inch um, seam, I'm going to sew this row together, this row together, and then this row together. Let me go do that. I nearly forgot to say I need to come underneath here and trim this out before we do. I don't want all this bulk, so we're going to cut this away. You know, there's tricks out there for not wasting these, for go ahead and sew in ahead of time and then having another square, but you can just save them and use them for another quilt. So now I just need to sew that to that and this to this, and our block is done. Let's iron it. I think it's the fun part to watch it get ironed and flattened out. Now, I'm not worried about perfect points because, like I said, I wanted this to feel a little folksy or a little primitive, um, but I might have gotten some really good points. I don't know. I wasn't trying for like perfection, which I'm never going to do because I can't do perfect. Ooh, see right there? She ain't perfect. She has a, she has an error. Now, if I was putting this in a quilt for someone, like an heirloom quilt, I would probably fix that. And I may still hear because it may drive me insane. <laughs> we'll look at it and see. Nope, I don't think I'm fixing it. I think I'm fine with it. What I am going to do is square this quilt up because look, my points aren't good there. They're not perfect there. That one's the worst. We're going to let it ride and we're going to square it up. Originally, when I was planning this block, I wasn't planning on it to be this big. And also, I didn't really want to have all of this and all of this and all of this. What I wanted to do, and I may still do, was put another piece of fabric on top, sew a quarter of an inch around like this, and then trim all that excess away, turn it inside out, and sew a star on the sweatshirt, not a block. But I want to see what this block looks like first. So if I put the block on, I feel like it's a lot. I feel like that is a whole lot. However, if I do sew a piece of fabric and turn this inside out, I can get rid of a quarter of an inch. It'll take, it'll bring it in half an inch. You know, it'll be a little bit smaller. And that might be okay because it is kind of cute. But if I went with my other idea, it would just be the star. Oh, the star is cute. I think we're doing it. I may regret it. We'll find out at the end. If we, if we regret it, we can make another one. I have the fabric. All right, let's do the next step then. So let me explain this a little better because I think I may be confusing you now. So I've seen one video online and they made one of these and they put it on the front of a sweatshirt, but they used heat and bond. I could use heat and bond to understand how that works, but I feel like it makes it not have natural give on the body and especially for Jenna because like I said she's a tiny little thing and if I did a big square of heat and bond on the chest of her shirt I keep turning this guy sideways I feel like that would be too much okay so if I were going to do the whole square this is just a piece of excess fabric I have and to be honest if you have an old sheet I think it will work even better because you know if you have a sheet you've washed a thousand times it's not got the same bulk that even this does that would be even better. But what I had thought originally, if you were just going to put a full square on, and on my other girl's shirts, I may, on this one, I'm just not, what I would do is I would, um, no interfacing, no anything. I don't want anything to make it bulky, okay? So I would put this piece right sides together, and I would sew around, starting about here, all the way around, and all the way around to about here, leaving myself an opening, I would turn it inside out and iron it. That would finish my edges. And then I would just close this opening up. Now, some people don't finish the edges. Some people let it fray at overwashing. And that's fine too, but it's not really what I want to do. What I really want to do is with this fabric on the back, okay, I want to sew a quarter of an inch away from this star point, okay? I want to do that. I don't know how great it's going to work. But because then I want to cut out inside of here, turn this thing around and just have a star. Now, like I said, I've never done this before. And looking back, I wish I wouldn't have used this fabric. But good news is I only had to use two pieces of a layer cake to get all of this background. Not the kitty. I did have to use one for this. But this, all of this was just two pieces of a layer cake. So I don't feel too bad about that, especially for learning. But I think that's what I want to do. So let's talk about it. So I want to first make sure I'm stitching a quarter of an inch 
here. Like, cause remember we, I, not we, but me, I left a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the point. Okay. So I want to make sure, I think what I'll do is just go around and do that whole quarter of an inch all the way around and stop about here so I can turn it. Then what I'm going to do is come back and sew in here and in here and then here like this so I can cut it out, turn it around and just have a star. This could go south. Let me do it so you don't have to, right? Let me try it. So to show you what I mean, if I was going to leave it a block, I've sewn all the way around and I would leave this and I would turn this around. Of course, I would go in and trim my points, but I would turn this around. Get all my points nice and poked out. Then I'd iron this really, really well, and I'd sew closed the bottom. You can see I've got it where it'll just tuck under, and I could just sew that closed, okay? If I were just putting the block on, let's look at it. We might. We might steal. We might steal. I'm so nervous to do what I really want to do with those points, but I watched this girl. I'll link her channel below who's a garment sewist, and she's so brave, and she makes me want to be that brave. She just tries things, and it usually works out. See, it's just too much for me. I really do want it to be just here, just the star. Let's do it. So I've turned this over to the back in hopes you can see my stitch lines. They're right here. But one thing I got to caution you on that I didn't even think about, I was just going having a good old time. You still have to leave this open. So you're going to have to do one by hand. You have to turn one under. But this is what we're going to do. It's time to cut, and I'm nervous. But I'm going to do it. It's just fabric. It's just fabric, right? Let's cut. I'm going to cut right outside my little stitch lines. As I'm sewing, I'm thinking mistakes, 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 but it's what I want it to look like. And I've never, I guess the reason I'm so nervous is I've never seen how this is done. I'm just kind of making this up. So if you're watching this and there's a better way, please share because I got three more to make. Again, I know about Fusible Web. I just don't like the bulk it adds. Um, it's just the adhesive I don't like the way it does on the fabric. I've used that in lots of projects. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is in these points, because I want to turn this, I'm going to snip to the corner, not into the corner, just right at it. Okay, let's see what we've done. Let's turn it. Oh, wait, do I want to do anything here? I don't think so. We're going to see what happens. I have this thing for sewing and turning. I'm going to try it to get, help me with the corners. I think ironing is going to be a booger bear, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. All right, I'm going to get this all turned out, flatten those corners, and iron it real quick, and we'll be back together. All right, I'm not hating all of this up here. This looks pretty good. I did turn these back out and cut more off closer to the um, point to get that flat like that. Now we have to do this part. What I think I'm going to do is come in here, give myself some leeway, just cut more than I think I'll need just like this from there. So this is what I'll be turning inside out. And this should be plenty more than I need there. Should be, operative word. And then I'm just gonna turn all of this under. Now this will probably be a little fidgety. Maybe not. Start with the edges, I suppose. Get everything tucked. And then I'll probably either pin or wonder clip all the way around before I sew it down. Also, I realized these are not wasted, look. They're already half square triangles now. These are the pieces I cut away. So clean those up and I've got those I can use somewhere else. And these, I can clean these up and use them in some way. Who knows? But they're not totally wasted. Okay, so laid it onto the sweatshirt and I want to keep it as centered to that mark as I can. And I want to keep these little legs about even. So let's start pinning it down just to that top layer. In an effort to keep this from shifting too much when I get to the sewing machine, I'm really pinning it down. I'm sticking my hand under it to help me make sure I'm only pinning through that single layer, but I've pinned it just about every point. Let me show you. So I've pinned it every outside point and every inside point. Now I want to hold this up and see if it's centered. I think it looks good, so it's time to stitch. This is going to be hard. I'm not even going to try to film it. I'm going to have to get that back out of there and slide this out and just get the one layer. But here's my plan. First, I'm going to go around the very edge. Then I'm going to go in here and do in the ditch. Then I think I'm going to do in the ditch of everything to make the cat even pop more. So let's see how it goes. Okay, you guys, there it is. Now, there are so many things I would do different in the next one. 
The one thing I succeeded in was I wanted it to look primitive. Well, it does, okay? I really did want it to look like maybe somebody found an old quilt block and made this kind of sweatshirt situation. 100% got that. But the things I would change, I'd do something different with the star points. I want them to be more pointy. Um, I would do the kitty opposite where I did it floral and I did the green background. I would switch them because I think the kitty would pop more in real life. On camera, it looks fantastic, but I feel like in real life, you kind of lose the kitty. Um, what else would I do different? I don't know. I, I mean, those are the main things. I do like how it turned out and I think Jenna's going to love it. And I'm probably going to make her another one since this was my first one. And I'll probably do, she can have two sweatshirts. No big deal, right? She loves kitties. She has five kitties. So maybe she needs five sweatshirts. All right. I'm calling this one soft kitty, warm kitty. Isn't that cute? Soft kitty, warm kitty. Oh, one thing I did love and I do stand by is not doing the fusible web. It really makes it feel so integrated into the sweatshirt. Like it, it's so soft. See the movement? That's what I was looking for. I'm real happy with that. So. That is the Soft Kitty Warm Kitty Sweatshirt. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Listen, I love your comments. I love you telling me where I'm messing up or where I'm doing things well or whatever. So tell me in the comments. I literally am very new to this. So um, all of your advice is welcome. Let me know what you would do different. Maybe let me know um, what you thought I did well. Um, also consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you as part of my sewing family. So until next time, bye now.